Hey, 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 it's Chrissy Lulu. Today, I kind of want to touch on dog days of summer. So, sorry this video is going up so late. I was so busy last week and had a lot of stuff happen. I've got a lot on my mind right now. Um, and yeah, um, I've been enjoying some time off from drawing every day and having to finish such a nice piece every day and yeah um so if you haven't been around the whole time i have done two different challenges with completed pieces once a day for two months in a row um the first was mermaid and you can still watch the series for that it's still on my channel uh links are on my channel i guess um I'll link a playlist at the end where it is included. Um, and then this month I did Dog Days of Summer where I drew a different breed of dog every day. Um, and I kind of just want to talk about what I have gained from both of these experiences. So the nice thing about Dog Days of Summer is I was kind of more in control about what was being drawn every day. Instead of Mermaid where I was kind like, oh my god, what a drag. What am I going to draw today? I have to draw something. What the hell am I going to do? With Dog Days of Summer, I had a list going. I had a bunch of breeds on my mind. And I could just choose from it. What dog are you feeling like doing today, Kristen? Oh, I feel like doing the Lakeland Terrier. Okay, I'll do the Lakeland Terrier. Um, and here he is. Holy Clint Terrier. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, it was just very therapeutic in a way, kind of doing the same thing every day. I find drawing from life and drawing from photos to be very just relaxing and therapeutic. Um, especially when they turn out nice, it's just very satisfying. Um, and this, that's kind of like just a good word just to describe this challenge was very satisfying and it really made me feel good. Um, I, it was really rewarding. I really did learn a lot from this. I learned how... I really did learn a lot about the anatomy of dogs. I feel like I could better now kind of draw a dog from my head and I think I've gotten even better probably at just drawing dogs from reference. Um, if you look at my pieces from the beginning the end, I think you can probably see some improvement. Um, I did definitely have my favorites from this, uh, but I feel like the Dog Days of Summer pieces are just very much a collection. They all feel very cohesive, and they just feel like they fit together. It's so nice. Um, I don't think I've ever really had something like that happen with any of my other pieces, even if they're part of the same challenge. They don't ever really feel like they just fit together. But this challenge, it just works so nicely. And one thing I just kind of want to mention is even though doing challenges that aren't popular and are challenges that you came up with yourself don't get you as many followers, they can be definitely more rewarding. I can vouch for that. Uh, I did Mermaid last month, it was a drag, I, I did not enjoy it. Um, yeah, it did help me find followers, I was kind of like, oh Mermaid, everyone does this, I'm gonna do it myself, this is going to be fun, it was miserable, I hated it. Um, and then Dog Days of Summer, it was just a joy, um, I look forward to it, I look forward to posting, and people may have looked forward, to it. yeah, yeah, not may, people did, people did look forward me posting my art and seeing it every day and just expecting that um it was very rewarding and both um getting people's attention and for myself um so i mean kind of what i want to say is instead of doing challenges that everyone else wants or everyone else does a popular challenge do, do you pick challenges that interest you? Don't do it just because everyone else is doing it. You will get nothing out of a challenge that you're doing just for the hell of it. Um, 
So that's why challenges that you set for yourself can often be much more rewarding. So that's kind of what I experienced. Um, you might have something different, you can just tell me down below, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but this is kind of something I felt with um, Inktober. I've done Inktober for two years now. The first year I was not able to compete it. Um, first year I was kind of just doing whatever and it just didn't really work well. I wasn't really looking forward to doing it. I was just kind of I'm doing this because people do this, right? This is the thing people do. I just, there wasn't really any reward for me doing it. I didn't have Instagram at the time. I think I was just posting it on DeviantArt. And that was it. So there was like, really wasn't a ton of reward. I'm really bad at posting on DeviantArt. Um, if any of you guys follow me there, it's just a drag. Get the right format and post. On Instagram, I can take a picture and post it. It's simple and very easy to be active. But, anyways, that was kind of the problem with the first award, is there's really no reward for me. Even, like, artistically, it's like there's nothing to keep going. There was an influx of likes, I would say. Wow, I like this, I like this. Which is, it may feel, it may seem kind of self-centered, and... Like, just something to gain, like, help your hubris or whatever. But I find that to be a good motivator just for anyone. Like, if someone telling me you, you've done a good job, it's really a good motivator and keep going. So, the second time I tried Inktober, I felt like I had more of a desire to do it. I was like, I am going to do this. I'm going to do one a month. I'm gonna do it. And I did it. I followed all the way through. Just like no, sorry. Just like with Mermaid. But I did enjoy Inktober more. I kind of did kind of what I was feeling the day. I wasn't I wasn't locked to just doing one species like Mermaid. Or I just draw mermaids. I was very bored of mermaids by the end. Inktober was kind of you can draw anything. And I was like, what am I feeling like drawing today? Oh I'll do this. So it was and in the same way that Dog Days of Summer was therapeutic, it was therapeutic in that way. And by this point, I did have an Instagram. So if you want to see that, I, I, I also had a YouTube. Videos are actually here on my YouTube channel, and they are also on my Instagram. The pictures are on my Instagram, so if you want to look at that, go right ahead. I didn't really talk for any of it, so fair warning. Um, it was very more of a challenge set for myself. And it was kind of a tough time to know the school year, you know. Um, I ended up getting a bunch of pets. Um, to be specific, I got one guinea pig, and then she died on port. I got her on first, she died on port. And then at the end of the month, uh, more, October 13th, the middle of the month, more. I got two more guinea pigs, um, except I got them from a rescue this time, and I still have them today, and they are amazing. I love them so much. But yeah, I had a lot going on in my life, so it's really kind of interesting to um, see how you can work with something like this, even though you have so much going on in your life. That's kind of just a bit of a tangent, but yeah. Um, but yeah, like... Challenges that set restrictions can be fun for some people, but not for all. Um, I'm gonna say it right now, not all challenges are created equal. Not every challenge is going to be perfectly suited for you, so really, um, before jumping into a challenge, really make sure you're ready to commit to it or you want to do it. Don't feel like you're obliged to do it. Um, Challenges can be really different for everyone. I'm not going to say everyone has to do a challenge or whatever. Um, I mean, you could replace the word challenge with goals. Set goals for yourself. I think that's a very important thing. Um, 
I've been setting goals for myself monthly. It's, it's for over a year now, I believe. Um, I picked it up from a YouTuber on here. She's awesome. She talks about books. Might not interest you. Uh, her name is Jenna Moreski. She talks about her quarterly goals, and I've been setting quarterly goals for myself too. Um, while I may not be the best at them, um, I have been have I have felt that it's helpful in me getting stuff done. Um, I'm able to kind of have that written down in, in text so that I don't forget what I should be doing. And I can be like, oh yeah, I was supposed to do this, or oh yeah, that was something I wanted to do. So I don't have to just rely on my big old head to remember all of that. Because, as we all know, there's a lot that goes on in life, and your head, no matter how is not able to keep track of it all, all at once. So having it in writing can help actually solidify it in your brain, which is why you should take notes in class. Haha. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, this isn't a school lesson, but I just wanted to say that is one important thing. If you actually want to learn anything, take notes. Don't just sit there, diddle with your thumbs. Um, anyways, yes. Um, so writing it down solidifies it in your brain. But it also serves as a reference for you to look back on. So that's very important with the whole setting. And I guess you could say Dog Days of Summer was kind of a goal. Mermaid is a goal. Draw a Yeah, it's just the rewording of stuff. You know, you can word it however you want. You don't have to think of it as a challenge, like the one word for challenge or draw with the challenge. Some of those challenges are not as helpful to advancing your skill as other skills as others, like drawing with your left hand or drawing with your feet. That's just a for fun challenge. It's not going to help you in any way. But other challenges can really help you with your art journey. But yes, not all challenges are created equal. Anyway, yep. That's all I really have to say for today. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave a comment down below if you have anything to say, anything at all. Leave a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you really want to. I mean, I'm not going to force you one way or the other. Do what you want. Do what you're gonna do. Subscribe if you like my content. And yeah, see you guys later. Bye bye.